open micer right now. He is no stranger to the stage. Give it up for our homie, Taino Image. What's up, Gabi Goo? Happy holidays to you, yo. What's up? <laughs> Name of my poem is Twas the Night Before Christmas Woo! in the Hood, 2011. Yeah. Or Como el Grinch said, Christmas. Twas the night before Christmas, and he didn't have a job. So we hit the streets looking for something or someone to rob. There were no stockings, no chimney, never such objects. His neighbors lived in low-income housing, tenements for the projects. Although it had been three years since they voted for hope, the sad fact was that many a better life meant selling dope. If someone came through the window proclaiming, I'm St. Nick, they knew they were getting robbed and would beat his ass with a stick. <laughs> the ladies of the night were out in force looking for a man. He affectionately referred to them as the Poontang Clan. <laughs> Winter had arrived and it was becoming unbearably cold outside. So much so that Occupy Wall Street moved their, moved their operations inside. In Washington, the conservatives were blocking all measures to improve unemployment with impunity. Their sole mission being win the next election and fuck the economy. President Obama was under siege but still standing tall while Herman Cain got a visit from the ghost of Christmas booty call. <laughs> far, far from the puzzle palace he called Washington, D.C., he felt the gun metal against his waist growing ever much colder from the winter breeze. He could have been anyone affected by the economic woes of today, but for the purpose of this story, we're going to call him Hood Say. Hood Say was a type of dirtbag who would steal an old lady's purse. That's why the neighborhood would much rather see him laying horizontally in a hearse. He meticulously cleaned out home after home of all the gifts they bought, that he would destroy these people's holidays with a faraway thought. Very late that evening, when he thought he could no more, he decided on conducting just one last score. He looked through window after window, until he saw what he wanted to see in a box by a tree, a 50-inch plasma color TV. He easily jimmied the window open and climbed inside until he was startled and he pointed his gun at two little eyes that were open wide. Santa Claus, little Dexter muttered. I understand why you're packing a Glock. People get robbed about twice a week in this dangerous block. Is the TV broken? And will you bring back one that's the same? Because the bums at the NBA came to an agreement and my dad wants to watch the game. <laughs> he began pressing the trigger, but he couldn't commit. Something about the child's innocent gaze prevented it. Maybe his cold heart thawed at this critical time, or maybe he just had sobered from the earlier consumed wine. Wow. He said, no son, it's already fixed and I just put it back. You just startled me when I was taking it out of the sack. There's just one promise for me I want you to make, that you'll never take a shower with any of the coaches at Penn State. <laughs> Of this event, I will not be speaking because no one Guam believe me that Santa Claus is Puerto Rican. Hutse oh, left the boy's house and began to backtrack. And home after home, he put all their stuff back. A man dressed as Santa Claus who was working for, for the Salvation Army winked at him, as did his long deceased mommy. Wow. But it was those parting words that made Hutse think. He said, Merry Christmas to all. I'm going to have me a fucking drink. <laughs> I'm Taino Image. Merry Christmas. Oh,